Okay, everybody. I am going to do a long, long awaited review on my Flycraft fishing boat. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to turn it in to this. Okay, this is pretty much the whole boat. I always keep the frame assembled and I put it on top of our Enola B hiker trailer. And this is the actual inflatable part. I'm gonna get my battery out and my pump and I'm gonna go through a quick procedure on how I inflate this and pretty soon we will be fishing. Okay, so I got the boat out of the plastic uh, tarp. This is the actual floor. I got my 12 volt battery and my pump and let's get to inflating. So this is actually pretty easy from start to finish. I know it probably takes a good 20 minutes, 15 minutes to get this set up. Okay, so there's just one side and that approximately took about three minutes. So there's actually four sections of the boat that you have to inflate. And then I always get the boat inflated and then I put the floor in and inflate that. Okay, there we go. The boat is inflated. And now we're gonna take the floor in. And the floor is basically, it's a, like a paddle board. Once I get inflated, it's about so thick. And this is super, super sturdy. You can actually stand up in this boat and fish. And it's actually super comfortable. So let's get this inflated. There we go. Now all we have to do is put the frame on and secure the frame. Now I would recommend if you have two people, use two people. But my other half there is filming so I'm going to do this by myself. It's actually pretty easy. This whole boat, the boat, the frame and the seats are right at about 100 pounds. So it's actually pretty easy to maneuver. Okay, so the frame is on. It does have these extra pieces of uh, boat material that the frame rests on. And I basically line up the frame with this and then you have your straps that you secure. You have two on each side and one on the back, and that holds the frame to the boat. And one of the neatest features about this boat is the anchoring system. So I got a uh, 25 pound anchor and basically the rope goes through the frame and then you just attach your anchor like so. And like I said, the rope goes through the frame up front and you can actually pull and release the rope to drop your anchor. And I'll go show you that right now. Okay, so this is the middle of the boat. And the rope runs all the way through the frame and out the back right behind the trolling motor. This rope lock here, you do this, and then you let the anchor go. And then once you are at the de desired depth, you just lock it and then when you want to pull it up you just pull it up from here 
and I'll show you that out on the water. I have owned this boat for three years and I've had zero issues with it. It inflates perfect every time. I haven't had any leaks. Um, there's only really one major con and it's also a pro. This boat will float in three inches of water, which is awesome. I mean, it's designed really for rivers, you know, fishing for steelhead or German browns. And man, in the summertime, the rivers can get pretty low. This, you, three inches and you can go right across. Now the con being on that is, it's basically a bobber in the water. So it doesn't have much boat in the water. Um, so a wind or a good stiff breeze does push you around quite a bit. Um, so it's a kind of a pro con thing. I mean, other than that, that's really the only con. Um, I've been in river smallmouth bass fishing, trout fishing. I do a lot of bass, walleye, trout, just most fishing in general. Um, with the 55 pound thrust trolling motor, it scoots on pretty good. You can also put on a 2.3 horsepower Honda gas motor also on that. So that is on my wish list to do that. Like I said, this thing only weighs about 100 pounds. Um, I take it out by myself quite a bit um, and it's manageable. Um, it always does help when you do have, uh, well, help. Well, I'm gonna rig up some fishing poles and uh, get this baby in the water. We are at Lake Alamo in Arizona. We've got some bass and some catfish. But uh, as I get ready, I'll put the, some of the specs, like the weight, the length, and some other just general information. Like I said, I've had this for three years. Um, I'll have to look up the price. I'll put that up and see um, how much price difference is. Um, but I gotta tell you, this, this fits me because I've had, I've had a you know, 17 foot bass boat. I also had a uh, V-hull um, 14 foot with a 20 horse on it. But I needed something because I'm pulling trailers now and obviously I can't pull a boat so this this was my solution i did have a canoe prior to that um, again canoe was great but you know a little unstable this you can have two people in it standing up and bass fish like you're supposed to with no problem and tear down it's about the same it takes about 20 minutes or so to tear it down i did buy the um, 12 volt pump it pumps and sucks, so when I tear it down and I wrap it up in the tarp, I, I suck all the air out of it. Um, this was sold separately, if I remember right. This was about 80 bucks, but a whole lot easier than just using a hand pump. So let's get this thing out on the water, and uh, hopefully the, this wind will calm down a little bit. So I have a telescoping handle to help me steer, and you can just Turn it on reverse or forward when you need to. So let's crank this baby up. And that's wide open. This boat ideally fishes two people. Um, I've had three in it, it's a little tight. Um, but for two people and one person, it's ideal. And like I said, man, I fish for just about everything. And this boat fits the bill for just about everything. Um, and I've been really successful on this boat. There's been one time in three years of ownership that I've gotten skunked. So it's been a pretty good luck boat. So I have it on full blast right now. And you can see I scoot right along. It's very maneuverable. And like I said, you can stand up in it, no problem. Bounce around. 
pretty stable. It's pretty easy to uh, run the motor from the sitting or the standing position. Now we'll catch a big bass on the camera. Or not. <laughs> like I said, I don't have much luck when the camera is on. But as you can see, two people in here pretty comfortably can fish. I do have uh, rod holders, cup holders, so if you do a lot of trolling and stuff, you can attach to the frame for your rods and of course your cold beverage. Well, it'd be great to catch a bass while the camera is rolling, but I don't see that happening. After three years of ownership, I can honestly say I highly, highly recommend this boat. It solves a lot of problems if you're a full-timer um, and you're pulling a trailer or you're pulling a bunch of side-by-sides or four-wheelers. Or... So this you can throw right on top of your truck, your trailer, or deflate it and then inflate it when you get to camp. Okay, so I'm going to show you how the uh, anchor system works here. I keep my uh, rope kind of tied up when I don't need it. But basically all you need to do is pull this out. And you can see that the rope goes through the frame. And I am dropping the anchor as we speak. And then just to pull it up, you just pull it. Now the anchor is on the back of the boat, right below the trolling motor, and now it is locked in, ready to go. Okay, everybody, um, now that I'm back on shore, um, this is our boat. This is my good friend's Dave boat, and I want to take you over there. He's got some cool accessories um, that I don't have that I want to show you that you can get for your fly craft. And one of the cool accessories is actually a fly rod holder box, so your reels and stuff go in here. And then your poles go up inside to keep out of the way. Then he's got his mount for his rod holder. He's also got a 90 watt solar panel mounted on the back of his rack. So he gets a nice trickle charge while he's fishing. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this review. I, again, I highly, highly recommend these rafts. Very versatile. They work for fishing, every, these boats work for most of your fishing. We were actually planning to go down to the Baja and take these down and fish the Sea of Cortez. But with COVID, we can't do that. But hopefully next year, I'm gonna be putting on this in salt water and like catch some snapper and whatever else I can catch in the Sea of Cortez. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to put those in the comments and I will answer them as soon as I can. Thanks again for watching. Please subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. And we will see you very soon. All right, everybody. We are going to take Dave's fly craft. We're going to call it the gauntlet. No motor. There could be some sweepers but we're looking for better water to fish. So 
hopefully this goes well. The girls are the girls are going to meet us uh, down river, and we've got radio, so we can keep in touch. And there they go. So, uh, yeah, on to pursuit of better bass waters. Woohoo! All right, there is our destination. I know it doesn't look much, but there is a little gap in the river. This is what we've been fishing, and we haven't had any luck. So, against our better judgment, we are going. All right, here we go. side a little bit. Perfect. I'm going to have to get down. You alright? Alright. Alright. First obstacle. bamboo and grass. Well, for the interests of posterity, we'll try and film a little of this. We uh, are on our journey down the river, and we came to a little snag here. We, we chose poorly. Um, Rich is out of the boat. I'm about to get out of the boat, and we're going to walk it through kind of uh, African queen style through this little opening. I don't know if you can see Rich down there cutting tree branches out of our way. And then hopefully it's a smooth sail down into a nice placid lake full of fish. We'll see how that goes. Okay, mission accomplished so far. Rich just felled two huge branches. Just heading back out. And we're gonna, I'm gonna dive in and we're gonna walk this baby out of here using the tow on tow line to hold it in check, I hope. And we'll see how that goes. So, Good job. Things we do for big bass. <laughs> well, that was phase one. <laughs> now it's time for Dave to get wet. And out. I think I got everything that is continent. Okay. How's it look down below? Uh, what I can see is fine. Okay. All right, here we go. We're out of the boat, maneuvering through the jungle, which is going to be Going this way, we gotta step over it. Okay. 
You got it. You got it. Now I know how Lewis and Clark felt. <laughs> oh, look at the promised land. Holy shit. <laughs> All right.